can try to find a way to figure out MVP Black's drafting style, isolating Kyocha, forcing him on to different heroes has worked in the past. Kyocha mm -hmm. played a great Artanis, so I think the best we've seen so far in this tournament is first televised Artanis match. So it's tough. It's it's looking really... It, it's, it's just like, I don't want to try to say like it's over before it's over, but the game needs to find another way here, and I think the draft is the place to start. Yep, and that's definitely correct. I, it also feels like MVP Black is also experimenting on their draft. They're picking some not so common pick, commonly picked heroes as they face GG because they know they are a lot better at the moment. And GG can act also take advantage of that as MVP Black is, is doing something else than GG. They can actually counteract with the best draft. If possible, let's see if that's going to happen in game number three. And they can still make some things happen. No one knows. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely possible, right? We've seen big upsets in this tournament already. We've seen map wins that were shocking and surprising. Who would have thought that it would have been Miracle with their weak start that was the one to take the first map off of L5? This could happen. And again, it starts in the draft. MV Black goes down their normal set of picks in terms of maps going to Sky Temple for Game 2, going into Towers of Doom for Game 3. We've seen them prioritize these two maps very highly in the series where they're looking to take it 3-0. They want to take it 3-0. They want to try to catch up to L5. And for a good game here, look, they're really trying to break into the top four. And they're on the cusp of it. But this is just obviously a tough matchup for them. And uh, it's time to look forward, look at the future in this best of five. They've already shown us some really cool drafting. But there's something missing. There's something they need to make happen here on this third map. Otherwise, they're going to go out 0-3. They will have first pick, and that's kind of how it goes. When you're a losing team, at least you've got that on your side to try to build a comeback. Yep, and MVP Black, we saw them stomping down another team. They actually controlled all six bell towers before. We've never seen that before coming out from Korea. That was the first time in my casting career I've seen anything like that. We may actually see another stomp from MVP Black, just perfect rotations coming out. And I think GG can actually ban Sergeant Hammer in a way. So I think I don't think they're, they have plans or preparations against that Sergeant Hammer push right into their forts this time, Bell Tower. I think they can actually ban out Sergeant Hammer in the second ban rotation phase. I think that's another Another mix they can put into their draft. Uche has one uh, game of Sergeant Hammer. He actually has an incredible hero. He's played eight heroes in this tournament. They're going to ban Falstad instead, which is an equal, if not greater, threat in terms of EXP leads, bell tower pressure. It's so difficult to regain control of bell towers when you have Falstad against you. And Zarya looks like we'll be locked in here. Now, I agree with what you're saying. Sergeant Hammer is a bit a menace. And the problem is that... She feels like one of these strong crux heroes, but the heroes that come before her lead to having her in that position where she can do all that damage. If you have Malfurion uh, to root people who are trying to chase her, if she's playing a little bit conservatively, it's hard to kill her. I don't think you can actually first pick Sergeant Hammer right now, mm -hmm. but I do agree that Sergeant Hammer seems to be, if you could hone in on one problem, the issue that GG is dealing with here. And, yeah. It's, it's unfortunate, you know, because like, if they first pick Hammer here, it's like you take a big risk in draft. But if you don't, then it might end up being that Black kind of drafts in that anyways. It's not a. It's not that you have to take it. You can go in towards that DPS choke as as what as what Blossom did in game, match number one. And also taking away Ragnaros in game two and not really having that CC to really connect with that sm with the smash didn't really work out too well. But taking the variant looks... Like, one of the best choices right now in the, in the Korean draft. And MVP, they have a lot of options here. It either, Mar we saw Mary Day on Uther last weekend. You know what? I think we might see a Zeratul pick here. Mm -hmm. and Very likely. We'll see if it ends up getting banned, um, if it makes it through this rotation. I thought we might see Zeratul even from Black in the first rotation. He might Kyocha is 5-0 and on the hero currently. He's played it five times. It's actually his most played hero in this tournament. Looks like he's going to be playing Dahaka here instead. We'll see if GG, with this high priority of Varian, wants to go into the Zeratul. They might even go... They could go Malfurion Zeratul here, or they can go into the Ragnaros Malfurion and uh, perhaps try to force the ban out of MVP Black. But they're in a pretty good spot 
I feel, in this draft currently. Black wanted the consistent damage and they wanted the global. So they are winning on the global front. But this is what, you know, I always say this, but it's just true. Like, first pick is always prioritized by losing team because of the second rotation phase where they have the ability to take two away and then ban one. So you've essentially gotten five heroes where your opponent's team has gotten four uh, in terms of what you were able to pick. And you have that one lead up. Tassadar, I did not expect to see him. And they're hiding their DPS. Could also be Tracer coming out from GG. Which MVP Miracle also tried against Black, but did not have a successful time. And that will be a Bala Ben, as expected. And that's why GG picked up Tassadar. And also to take in mind, Medivh is also uh, not too likely, because they, they actually picked up already very tanky heroes in the first rotation. But that's also possible. And MVP Black is the team that brought Medivh into this battle. You know what? I would, would really like to see a Karzim ban here because it, it's, it's been a glaring strength for MVP Black. Mar uh, Meriday's Karazim has been out of control good. They already have Malfurion. They have the secondary support in Tassadar. Removing Karazim here just feels right. It's such a mobile hero. It could do a lot in team fights when you have it in the right hands like Meriday. So you can't lock out DPS. You're already out of that spot. And if you ban ETC, it just feels weak because there's already a lot of other tank options available in Dahaka is already on the table, has global. So I'm looking at the Karazim ban here. I think it's the best option. What are they going to grab? They're going to go with the ETC instead. It's not a weak ban, but it doesn't feel as impactful to me. Also, and they insta-lock it. Look yep. at that. And Karazim, just to add on your point, it's also a soft counter to Varian because it does have cleanse after a cleansing touch after 16. But 16 is a long way into the game. But since... Varian does, does, does not get too much power until 10, so it's between 10 to 16 you can be a little bit passive and then once you hit that 16, you can basically counter all that taunt with the Kerosene. And it is on Merry Day on Kerosene we're speaking about. Alright, Tyrael comes in. So it looks like our melees are set for Black. They have a 5th pick hidden here. And now the question is, do GG commit to the Tracer pick? They've led us down this path. It could be something like a Tracer Gul'dan. Uh, to, to lead things up, to finish things up. It's it's tough, man, to actually go into that. When you have Dahaka can help lock Tracer down. If Recall is off cooldown, Tychus can grenade her into position to being killed. Karzim goes where she goes on the defense and on the attack. We talked about how he pairs well with her, but also against her in terms of mobility. So it's definitely a strong possibility we see the the tracer here it feels like you're going all in and we talked about gg what they need something they need some extra set perhaps this could fail horribly but maybe it's time to do it and they're going to commit there's the tracer lock in will it be solo damage tracer or are they going to go for a mage like Gul'dan here we're going to find out rag coming in so the double melee here Tracer is the only source of consistent range damage. That's mid-range at that. So this comp is almost pure melee. If you think about it, Tracer has to get pretty close to do her damage. And that's where Sergeant Hammer is going to be a great counter. We talked about how powerful this hero has been for Black throughout the series. Black locking in their picks almost instantaneously from start to finish here. And GG as they finish up with Tracer and Rag. They do have a good combo with Varian and Rag, which is super strong. We saw a lot of good picks coming out from all the teams with that with that duo and MVP Black got us also got a solid draft as we go into possibly the last game of the of tonight. Let's see if MVP Black can close this series or GG will actually bring this series back to on their own. Let's go into Towers of Doom. MVP Black. Sake on Sergeant Hammer. Reset on Tychus. Test is on Tyrael. Kyocha on Tahaka once more. And Meride on his <laughs> beloved Karazim. 6 0 on that, by the way. GG. BDG on Tracer. Jaehyun on Malfurion. Good on Ragnaros. Hooligan on Varian. UJ on Tassadar. Karazim has been given to Meride nearly half of the total games Meride has played this season. 
total of six of the 14 games. And the ETC ban's not terrible. Oh, look at this. Forcing a recall super early from BDG. And Meriday, again, like I said, he's got that mobility on Karazim to chase down the Tracer. Um, the ETC ban is not a weak ban, but I feel like allowing Karazim is... I preferred if they had taken the Karazim away because Tist can play anything. He even went into a Tyrael here. Yep, and they actually... Surprisingly, MVP Black had Tychos and Sergeant Hammer. Looks like they want to go in full-in rotations, push all of those bell towers. Top having the Haka Global made very strong push and also fought with Hammer. Let's see how GG can react to that. When they also have pretty good mobility when Tracer comes into the point. And Uje on Tassadar, of course, great for wave clear. That's right. See BDG trying to do a little bit of harassment here. Tracer is always looking for that early pulse bomb. They already have one. Oh, Reset's going to come in here and get this for sure. Didn't even use his grenade yet. So going to be a, an early pickoff in the top lane on Ragnaros. But pulse bomb was, was gotten early for BDG. He's looking for that pick. He wants to get that kill in the early game on someone. But there's no one to pair with him, you know? Like, Tassar can make Tracer really strong. But the, the way we've seen Tracer have the most success in Korea is paired with something like a Brightwing or an ETC, where you come in, you have this big stun, pulse bomb, guaranteed hit, and that extra uh, second clip of ammo that Tracer gets through. And this, they just don't have that. They're looking for that lockdown, the combo that's going to come later, but level 10 is so far away. They do have Hooligan on Varian, which lets them have some CC to lock in. Let's see if that actually connects with Smash. Maybe he does get very low, but survives after that pulse bump. BDG onto the chase, but look at that mobility just so fast. You can get out of any kinds of situation with dashes and all your movement speed boost. Sake did a little bit of body blocking. Tracer was unable to gain vision to actually get the lock on there. That was really impressive. And actually, looks like a good game with this exchange. We'll get one of these bell towers looking for two. Tist does deny with Aldruins. And MVP Black is on the, their way back here to try to buy more time. Does Reset have a grenade? Nope. So this is actually going to go in favor of good game in terms of alters, in terms of EXP, obviously, and pushing its MVP Black's favor right now. But this is a good start for good game, absolutely. Yep, notice how BDG is... Looks like BDG is the one that's harassing Sake, but it's actually BDG getting more damage from from Sake. That's that was kind of funny to see. Well, I think it was an intentional bait. It was pretty smart, but eventually Sake called the bluff because everyone was rotating down. So had that worked out, it would have been really nice. Good. Nearly gets caught here, counterwise, up towards the top point of the map. But we'll get away. BDG very aggressively looking for a pick here. This time, maybe he'll commit to the Pulse Bomb. He actually doesn't have one. He used it earlier. Reset. Super low, but Merida trying to save him once more. BDG does get the kill. Merida goes down as well. Two kills for good game. They take the lead in EXP just briefly here. Zaka is still pushing the bot lane, trying to get that tower down, but uh, very well done, even without the pulse bomb there to get the kill. Yep, GG was the... Committed all five of their teammates onto the, that chase. Maybe they went for the save, but ended up being, becoming buy one, get one free. And... <laughs> Merida, Merida, he's a human, he's not God, as he also does make mistakes. And GG was the right one that actually had to chase. If they are able to chase down with that, just like that with Tracer, they should be finding themselves a uh, level ahead. <laughs> <Up>. <laughs> that was a cool grenade right there. We all knew it was going to happen. Even, even Varian knew. Hooligan was like, ooh, I don't know what, I guess I'm just dead here. <laughs> that was... That's the power of Tychus 2 in lane. The grenade just goes right through the gate. There you have it. Sorry, I tried to have that almost Korean commentator hype moment there, but... <laughs> no, no, that's fine. Uh, so far here, pretty successful invade from MVP Black coming on to this right altar, even having some spider mines laid here. The Pulse Bomb does not connect. BDG in trouble. And it looks like they will control this location. We see Molten Core forced to be used to buy some time here. And Tychus actually went for Relent Relentless Soldier getting some armor when he gets stunned by that Varian. So very good talent choice against Varian on reset right now. Reset is very low as I'm talking about him. 
does go down, but it's a 2-1 trade right now. It's how much damage he absorbed there. He almost was a tank. <laughs> Gojo wants to get the grab so bad, he's not going to get it. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm glad you mentioned that because it actually made him uh, so a little bit more survivable there. He is one of the tankier DPS, and he's making him himself into a more of a tank when they already have basically the Haka and the Tyrael to save him. Yep, those Terran Marines, man, they've got those nice spacesuits, you know, nice and tanky. Well, Rainer's got some drugs to help with that too, but that's another story for a different time. Uh, Sake gets one siege tank shot up and knows that with this four mile rotation here, it's not worth staying. They're still, though, going to maintain control of this sapper camp and get mid and bot soak. So they're pushing for Ted. And GG collapses really hard here, but is unable to find anything, which is so unfortunate. And now Reset's going to put a little bit of pressure on this bot bell tower while Kyocha rotates over to start the uh, the sapper camp. And they're going to be able to take that and push this forward. I say Kyocha, um, I mean Tist, of course. Kyocha used to play Tyrael sometimes. Forgive me, I've been casting me black for a long time. Yep, roll man. Roll swaps get me. Yeah, they, they've they been trying some new things, especially with that those roll swaps as they're really pushing toward they're really pushing their boundaries of what they can do against what kind of team comp. And it looks like for the time, they're making it right, making the right decisions. And this is actually not going to be a kill because adaptation is used already. Well, Way too early. Yeah, that was a bit odd. But at the same time, MV Black had already kind of given up uh, the potential that Kocha might die. I feel like he could have escaped there, possibly. Mm -hmm. But either way, Black is just going to take a Bell Tower for this. So yeah, we'll trade one hero for a Bell Tower. Like, we've already got control of this. Good nearly goes down. We see BFG once more. It's actually going to get chased here by Meriday. The second dash will kill him. Second time's a charm. The Sapper is going to secure this Bell Tower right before the altar phase. They're going to have control. And Kyocha's already respawned and could come into the fight with his Brush Stock. So this is a really scary position right now for GG. They're already losing Malfurion. Rag was dead earlier, and this is disastrous. Three kills here. Bell Tower stolen. Looks like we might be seeing five damage right to the core. And the scary rotations is about to start for MVP Black as Dehaka goes to channel that altar at the bottom. They're going push. They're going to push all in to the mid lane. I think they actually want this to be a six bell towers all the way. They want to finish this series as soon as possible tonight. Well, they're on that path, G Clef. Pushing in the mid now. As BDG. And pals are going to clear up this bell tower. So that's what happens on this map. If you get a bell tower, the threat and vision it provides is so frustrating to deal with. What In the time it takes you to retake a bell tower, you will lose another bell tower most of the time. Two stuns here go off. As you see, a nice palm ignored, though, by GG. Really good fight here for GG. They're unable to get the kills, but started off really nice for them. Regardless, they can't save the bell tower, though. So it's, again, a bell tower for a bell tower in black. Had the top lane been pushed a little bit more, might actually just go up there and take it. They're going to take this sapper camp, time it with the second one, and try to go double sappers to retake the bell tower in the bot. And they're going to get a talent level lead here at 13. Yep, see how resets Tychus got stunned and got so much damage and even smashed right on top of him, and he still survived. It's He could have died if he literally did not pick that talent. I think that is the right choice against GG when they're going all in to focus down on Tychus. Really, props to re props to reset on by yeah. just choosing that talent. One of the biggest changes. That's what makes Heroes of the Storm just so fun to play. You can out, you can pick the talent you actually want that will counter the other team, and that sometimes that makes the biggest difference in the team fights. Well, going back to what we were talking about earlier, as you make a really good point, we're seeing the bell tower taken once more, and now while they take this bell tower back, Black can go top and get that top bell tower with a sapper camp, or they can try to do a little bit of both, have Kyocha push the top lane while pushing mid to try to get a little bit more, and it looks like that's their op uh, their their option they're gonna take here. And GG just gets the, the sapper camp on red side during all of this, and now they're gonna rotate up, try to punish this, but they're a bit too slow on it. Hooligan commits here, so does Molten Core. They're trying to get a pick here. Tist kind of stuck, has to Aldruin's over that route, and they're gonna be able to turn this fight. Unfortunately, GG just not able to do much here uh, with that collapse. They're down a talent tier. That's not really the reason, though. MVP Black was just too quick, too slippery. Let's see if they can. And Hooligan actually cancels his channel and goes right in, gets bounced off, as Dehaka actually already got the got the altar on the bottom. 
There's the BFG. Not enough damage on Jihyun, but he's very low. Yep. It looks like Kyo just going to look for the grab here. Unable to get it. Hooligan gets the charge through here to try to kill him. Tassadar dies. Meanwhile, the chase is on, though. And guess what? This tower is not red side anymore. It's going to hit Jaehyun. He's going to get slowed. There's the grenade kill. Another kill onto Rag as well. BDG's on the retreat. And five more shots directly to GG's core. And it looks like Black is going to try to get another bell tower with this. They've got half health on the bot bell tower. They're going to push the, the mid one as well now. Sapper's unavailable to try to push. They may take mid and then take both sappers to escort. GG is in such a frustrating position right now. Yep, and GG really has to make a choice here. They either can go hit, hit 13 and try to team fight before MVP Black hits that 16 because they're just being out macroed right now, especially with the Haka on MVP Black side. This will be a good pickup, but Sang saves the day. Sake just running away. Now, BDG has Pulse Bomb, but no good targets here. Dahaka's protecting the bot altar, and they're actually going to go for a six altar. It wasn't as fast as they got it last time, but with the protection that Kyocha provided, the minion wave was never even pressuring that. They're going to see this collapse now for good game, because they know this is the only altar they could probably take back right now to prevent the missiles from attacking their core directly. But for a brief period of time, they will get shot. Probably at least one or two here, as Kyocha is forced to retreat. One, just one. <laughs> yeah, it looks but like still, I mean, that's pretty significant. Now they're just going to take the boss. Yeah, just one is enough, and boss with another altar should be... And Gocha actually gets picked off, which is a very good news for GG right now, as altar should be coming out soon. But this is another four shots going into that core. Ouch. Only Sapper's going to be pressing the top lane here uh, for that likely altar spawn. GG, yep, here's the altar spawn bottom. So GG is going to have to make a tough decision now. Do we defend the sappers that will attack our core directly, or do we defend the altar and bot and try to take control? It's it's looking like they want to defend both. They're going to try to cut anyone off that comes down right now to the altar while moving up to the top lane, but Sake is already in position to protect it. This looks tough. Triple altar going in. This taunt and a kill on Tyrio. This is the best choice at the moment, as Dehaka already in position to... He can come down. He can take yep. the bot altar. He's going to brush stock down there. No one can deny him. Here comes the sapper cap. Yeah, and if he, if he gets this, it's just game, right? It, it is it actually is. GG. And no one can stop him. And he, they just let it happen. MVP Black is going to get that bottom altar with the sappers. They were unable to commit to either stopping the bot altar or the sapper camp. They couldn't do both. And MVP Black basically checkmated them there. And with both going to their side, they win the game. It's tough, man. That altar phase is so difficult. What are you going to deny? The blue side altar. Then Kyochi gets the bottom one anyways. And you can't you can't stop all three. You can't stop the sappers and both altars. It's just not going to happen unless you have, like, Lost Vikings or something. It's just not possible. Not even with Lost Vikings, I would say. They will actually get picked off also. Not having the global, especially on Tars of Doom, and that triple altar spawn at the very end. GG was forced to make a decision. Like, they were forced to make a decision, but none of their decision could have been perfect. So that's game number three, just MVP Black showing what they can actually do against the weaker team. Just on near perfection game there. I think they're going to have a fun time going against Tempest tomorrow. They get the maps they want, too, which 